Hello everyone, welcome to SJS classes. This is the third part of my discussions on the poem Shanta by the popular Malayalam poet Kadamaneta Ramakrishnan. In the first part, I gave you a short introduction to the poet as well as the poem and I also discussed the first three stanzas. In the second video lesson, I discussed the next eight stanzas and in this video lesson I will discuss the remaining ten stanzas. Let's read the twelfth stanza. Don't you remember how we sat sharing tender smiles, eyes locked, caressing with gentle fingers the new shoots of the sapling near, nursing off and on sweet wounds from the honeyed thorns of love tips, Stealing caresses in the idle dalliance in the forest shade on the faraway hill. So from the previous stanzas we understood that there are two speakers. We understand that the man who is the speaker has come back to his home, his village. He has a wife and she is named Shanta. It's to her that he talks all throughout the poem. The speaker understands that the situation back at his home and his village has changed. There is scarcity of water and it is terribly experienced by these villagers. The ponds, streams, rivers, everything, every water source has dried up. The crops that they used to cultivate, they too have perished in this extreme uh, climatic conditions as well as the situations on the land. Now it is in the midst of this tragic plight that we have this conversation happening between the man and his wife who is Shanta. So he asks his wife, don't you remember how we sat sharing tender smiles, eyes locked, caressing with gentle fingers the new shoots of the sapling near? So the speaker recollects some of the events from the past, probably, or uh, he talks about the good things that happened in the past, a time when everything appeared in plentiful in that land. Don't you remember how we sat sharing tender smiles, no. smiles that display affection, or it, it can even mean uh, smiles they gave when they were really young, eyes locked caressing with gentle fingers so he he talks about all those good times that they had in the past caressing with gentle, gentle fingers the new shoots of the sapling near nursing off and on sweet wounds probably he's referring to the hurt that they gave each other or the wounds that the flowers the plants their crop had in the past how they nourished and uh, took care of their saplings. From the honeyed thorns of love tips, tips means a pity coral, a coral or a petty thing, a simple silly thing. So from the honeyed thorns of love tips, stealing caresses in idle dalliance, dalliance means you know, a playful behavior. So all these are indicative of the fact that they had had a good past. They had spent some quality time with each other as well as the nature around them. So the speaker asks her, don't you remember all these events, all these happenings that we had in the forest shade on the faraway hill? The days when you, full of mischief, drew and erased doodles in the sandbanks. So he also recollects some of these uh, images, events from his memory. The days when you full of mischief, young young days when the when both the speaker and his wife were young, drew and erased doodles. Doodles, as you know, are rough drawings. So drew and erased doodles in the sandbanks of the rippling stream of our dreams. So all these are indicative of the, or all these suggest that they had had a good time in the past. And he is speaking of those good times now. The days when we both turned into a dream, when their very lives uh, fell to them like a dream. 
along with other dreams asleep in stone. The speaker is probably referring to the dreams they are yet to see. The days that woke up to the sound of festive hail flower calls, hail is small ice particles or snow particles and these are being described as flowers here. The days that came at the peak of a season of fun, frolic and fruitful rumination. So the good times that they had in the past, the recreational activities that they did, the, the deep thoughts that they went through in the past or the useful thoughts that they had in the past. The, the season of fun, frolic and fruitful rumination that they had in the past. The wild intoxication of the days mixed with the magic of wilder hues. So the days were, days were filled with excitement and elation and these days were mixed with the or this, this particular excitement and elation was mixed with the magic of wilder hues. It was mixed with the colors of nature. Making us proud as merry peacocks spreading out feathers in idle pleasure. Now you have a comparison there. It made them happy as merry peacocks. Peacocks who are happy. How they spread their feathers. Making us proud as merry peacocks, spreading out feathers in idle pleasure, dancing to glory a riot of colors, moving in brisk steps, breathless in frenzy, bodies melting, melting in the fierce dance. Probably the speaker is referring to their act of love, and they had a quick and energetic, uncontrolled sort of love. Bodies melting, melting in the fields, dance, their bodies seem to be melting and it uh, seemed like it was becoming one, a wild hunger, the passion of the forest and they were experiencing this extreme hunger and this strong desire by being one with nature. And at the end, don't you remember how we lay, spent on the bank of the stream like a whiff of air waiting for the morning. So uh, in the previous two stanzas the, the speaker has been recollecting events from his past and he uses this past to encourage uh, or he tries this uh, the good times that he had in the past to draw inspiration at the present and he says at the end don't you remember how we lay down spent on the bank of the stream like a whiff of air whiff of air means a short and light gust of air a gentle breeze waiting for the morning so he wants shanta also to recollect uh, all these events and he finally says arise shanta enter my veins like a new dawn like the wild passion of the forest the speaker requests shanta to bring back that passion and excitement in him again. With miraculous eyes arise, enter my sky like a flame of peace. Flow unto me like a river of solace. Come to me, Shanta, like a stream of music. So the speaker requests Shanta to bring back that passion and excitement in him again and also to bring peace and solace to him and also to get rid of the dullness, hatred and hostility from words that spread so he says come to me Shanda like a stream of music I have stolen myself to be with you in the hope of getting away from the prison house of dullness from the corridors of hatred and hostility from the pokes of words and looks from the illusions of mirrors from the oppression of the hourglass from the echelons of official hierarchy and from the rape of letters and figures so help me to do all this. Help me to rekindle the passion in me. Help me to get some peace, some peace of mind, some solace. Fill me with music and also help me to you know, get rid of some of the aspects of my life like dullness, hatred, hostility, the illusions of the world social divisions that I have to confront in the society and also the atrocities made by probably the men of letters against these lower cl class people or lower caste people. 
so from the pox of words and looks pox means a contagious disease from the illusions of mirrors from the oppression of the hourglass from the echelons echelons means a level level or rank or hierarchy or status from the echelons of official hierarchy so save me from all these aspects of my social life why do you remain so remote why are you staying away from me why are you remaining far away from me we must seek pleasure either in memory or in awakening so they have to come back to life from this stupor from the ridiculously tragic plight that they are in now but i see you do not even sweat no sweat even to moisten my lips why don't you break this impassiveness with a sigh at least so uh, he has lost his patience he wants his wife to respond and he wants her to you know break this impassiveness this apathy this lack of emotions that she is uh, displaying and he wants her to break this at least with a sigh yes i have come to know everything that the son of the widow next door has gone mad and run away that the sprightly girl who frolicked around like a lamb has taken poison and is dead so, so these events add uh, add on add on to the tragic events and uh, that had been happening in the land and he says he has come to know everything the story of the son of the widow next door uh, of how he went mad and ran away and also the story of the sprightly girl you know a girl who used to be carefree who used to play in a carefree manner who frolicked around like a lamp that shows her innocence how she took poison and she died so look at how uh, people were influenced by the happenings on the land you know so a son got mad a, an enthusiastic girl she took poison a carefree uh, girl an enthusiastic girl with a carefree manner she took poison and she committed suicide that the houses where no hearts were lit have gone up in flames i have also known how the woodcutter's axe swung around and felt its own owner how the woodcutter was killed by his own tool so he says that he has come to know everything all the happenings on the land and he has also known some other things known too are the chronicles of the royal hunt the the record or narrative of the royal hunt the speaker says that he has also heard about all these stories uh, probably from the village elders or you know from the folklores known too are the chronicles of the royal hunt of the old kings and the common tales of young boys silenced to death by unexpected arrows so the speaker says he has also heard about all these stories and can actually feel the same happening in his village i see blind parents impatient to hear the footsteps of their sons going to fetch water with no one to make pyres for them pyre here refers to funeral pyre the wood that is heaped to burn a dead body so we have blind parents who are waiting anxiously for their son to return who has gone to fetch water and they are expecting him to return because there is nobody to make a funeral pyre for them once they are dead dead bodies lie about rotting so he also says he has heard about stories when this land was filled with dead bodies which were lying uh, in a rotten state in a state of decay impassiveness shrouds this village after the lack of emotion shrouds covers this village like a pall of glo- gloom and gloom is described as a burial garment you have a simile there why don't you break this impassiveness with a sigh at least so this is the second time that he makes this request to shanta please break this apathy this lack of emotion this indifference that you are demons i mean displaying with a sigh at least break this arid silence with your perspiration things won't be the same all the time my girl so here you find that the speaker is trying to console the uh, woman he says break this arid silence arid means lacking vitality like in life with your perspiration with your sweating show that you are alive and he says things won't be the same all the time my girl 
So the speaker seems to be consoling his wife. Something might happen someday. So he has become very optimistic now. He says something might happen someday. Some sort of change will come over definitely. He is being optimistic. Water might suddenly spout. Look at the hope that is being conveyed through the line. There are a lot of tragic events happening on the land. There is despair uh, in the land. But, you know, sometimes uh, magic can happen. Sometimes things will happen someday. And he says water might suddenly spout from springs erupting in the black rocks. Let us therefore talk to each other. Let us laugh or weep or exchange a few meaningless words. So instead of being idle, instead of being inactive, instead of being impassive, let's do something. Let's talk. Let's laugh. Let's weep. Let's exchange a few meaningless words. If not, we too will rot. If we don't do this, we will lose our life. So we will also become like the rotting dead bodies. If not, we too will rot like the heart of this village. So the village has is already uh, rotting and so will we if we don't uh, exchange at least a few meaningless words. Like the heart of this village and the stench of rotting bodies. So they will experience intense apathy and impassiveness and will gradually rot if they don't exchange something, feelings or emotions or at least a few meaningless words. And the stench of the rotting bodies will lay eggs in our own nostrils. The larvae of ruination emerging from those eggs will breed in us. So this, uh, here the speaker talks about an irrecoverable state of destruction. So they will, you know, finally confront their end, their death. So if they don't exchange something between them, then probably uh, their life would also be at stake. Let's therefore break this dark shell of silence and talk. Let's negate this detached calm. Let's negate means let, let us deny or contradict or act against this detached calm. Detached means, you know, showing lack of emotional involvement. So let's stop this apathy. Let's stop this, you know, lack of involvement with each other. And let's talk. And let's stop this silence and let's stop uh, talk. Ah, but we are here under this palmyra, our legs bound by manacles. So he says that we are under this palmyra, palm tree, and our legs bound by manacles. Manacles means chains. All that we can see, hear and know are through these manacles. So we are under chains. We are covered or wrapped or confined in chains. And everything that we see or hear or know are through these manacles. This shows the present situation of their life, the present state of their life. They are actually chained to their own houses. My woman, it is through these manacles alone that I can see you. So again, he uh, reiterates the idea that they have been put, their lives have been put to chains. He says our lives have been put to chains. They have lost all their freedom. Let's break them with a sigh at least. Ah, the warmth of your sigh, I can feel it on my face. So probably this is the only warmth that you know, the speaker is experiencing. Here I can see perspiration on your forehead. Perspiration is sweat. Right? And in, an indicator that the person, the woman is alive. I can hear your heartbeat too. He says, awake beauty, full woman, you who were wrought from ebony, Awake to pollute the sacred grove at Kadamaneta. So he says awake. He says this to Shanta. Earlier he said arise. And now he is saying awake. Awake beauty. He calls her beauty. Full woman. A woman who has fully uh, become mature. Grown up into a full woman. You who were wrought from ebony. You who were made from ebony. Ebony tree. Awake to pollute the sacred grove at Kadamaneta. Grove means a small group of trees. Awaken and come wearing lightning on your tresses. Grains of corn in your beautiful eyes. So probably the speaker is asking her to come like a goddess who has you know, lightning on, your, uh, on her uh, beautiful tresses, beautiful hair. Grains of corn in your beautiful eyes with nature behind in her and with her. Leafy ornaments in your ears and a necklace of precious stones. Awake, arise to pollute the sacred grove at Kadamanita. 
come and make a change that is what uh, the pro probably the speaker is trying to convey come and make a change and perhaps this change is not expected and desired and that is probably why the speaker des describes it as something which is polluted ascending the stairs of hell is this army of pariahs the community which used to be uh, addressed as a lower class community the pariahs community the dalit community ascending the stairs of hell is this army of pariahs singing and dancing wildly dancing in wild abandon is this army of pariahs beauty full woman you whom blossomed forth from the shoot of the wild eduk eduk is a plant with a lot of medicinal properties awake arise and pollute the sacred grove at kadamanita here in this valley, valley of grief and hunger dances the serpent of fire so the village is portrayed as a valley afflicted by sadness and hunger dances the serpent of fire shedding its slow slow means the skin of the snake its hood spread out high the sound of drum beats so the paraya community were believed to be originally drummers so you have this reference here as well in the previous stanza you had the direct reference to parayas now you have the indirect reference the sound of drum beats echoing in the dry fields waiting for rain the full throated shriek of the plantain tree eager for sprout so the high pitch noise coming from this banana tree probably the imagery of uh, a labor a delivery coming to birth you know taking birth is being pictureized here the full throated shriek of the plantain tree eager for the sprout awake you full woman awake you little brook brook means a natural stream of water you who are shaken by the palmyra trees awake arise to pollute the sacred grove at kadamanita the poem which began as a sharing of the present plight or predicament of uh, the speaker and his wife shanta along with the village ends on a note at a point where the speaker request his wife to take the form of a goddess to be the inspiration to be the bringer of change to the land and this makes us think that perhaps woman shanta is the only is the sole person who can bring some solace or comfort to the land it also uh, you must also remember that this poem was written under the backdrop of the indian emergency of 1975 and this poem makes an attempt to document the emotional history of a turbulent period by placing on record the detail, details of the disappearance of softer sentiments and dreams from the lives of ordinary people and from all that we have garnered from the poem let's understand that the speaker uh, is probably hinting at the fact that it's perhaps only shanta who can bring back all those excitement all those emotions all those optimism back to his life it's only shanta who can actually make him feel alive again and that is the request that he makes to her throughout the poem with that we come to the end of this video lesson thank you so much for watching um, this video if you haven't yet subscribed to my youtube channel please do subscribe it so you will get other video lessons on literary criticism malayalam literature and english translation and also other general topics related to literature life and technology thank you